All right, guys, welcome to this episode. And in this one, I'm going to be explaining how you can create a strategic partnership in 2021 and beyond. Now, before I go on to explain how you can do that, I first want to explain what I believe a strategic partnership is. Essentially, it's where one or two parties or more work together to get a desired outcome or goal. And at the center of all this is a win-win solution for all two. Okay, so that's very, very important. It's working as a team to get to that desired outcome or goal. And in this um, episode, I'm going to explain actually two ways you can create a strategic partnership. Now, the first one comes down to three key areas, money, time, and knowledge. Now, back in 2015, I started my first property business, right? And my um, strategy at the time was to uh, invest in HMO properties, which is houses of multiple occupation. Now, 24 or 25, I was financially broke. I was working for police as a detention officer, and I needed someone who had funds so I could leverage those funds to invest in a property, right? Now, at the time, due to my shift pattern in the police, I worked a shift pattern of four on and four off, which meant I was time rich, okay? So let me explain that again. I was cash poor or money poor, okay, but I was actually time rich, and at the time, I'd actually invested in myself um, around £18,000 plus VAT into education to learn how to invest in for property, and I had the expertise, or at least I was gaining the expertise, okay? So essentially, I was looking for someone who was cash rich or money rich, who was essentially time poor, so I could give my time to the projects, and they could give their money to the projects. So essentially, that's what my strategy was, right? And that, again, uh, is an explanation of a win-win. If I could find someone who hadn't got the time to do certain things in property, and I could give my time to doing that, then they would be happy, and also I would be happy, and so would they, if we could use those funds to get a desired outcome, which was producing a HMO property that was very great at cash flowing, okay? So essentially what I did was go about speaking to certain investors, and one key thing that I did was I didn't ask for money. All right, and you may be thinking, Alex, you just explained you needed someone who was money, so what did you do? Why would you not ask for money? Instead, and I wish more people would do this, I offered a opportunity, okay? So I explained to certain investors, would you like to get involved in this opportunity? I didn't ask about the money or essentially, um, you know, what I needed for the project until later on when discussions were uh, going forth with a particular project in mind. Instead, the initial conversation was, hey, do you want to get involved in this opportunity? Um, it could be a great opportunity for us. I can give this which was my time and knowledge. And of course, when conversations started to uh, develop, that's when the other individual or the investors started to explain what they could give to the project. And that's a great way of going around things, okay? I didn't start off by trying to get something straight away. I started off by giving something. Do you want to be involved in this opportunity, okay? It changed the dynamic straight away when it comes to strategic partnerships. So essentially, this is what I did with all my investors, and um, it worked out a treat. You know, I started to invest in one HMO property, then the next, and the next, and the next, and we had built a phenomenal portfolio in, in the grand scheme of things, a pretty short amount of time. And that essentially worked because that I went in from the mindset of what I could give rather than what I can take. So that's how I went about doing things with my investors. And long story short, um, within about 18 months, 25 to 24 months, we had built a phenomenal HMO portfolio, which allowed me to resign from the police and um, pursue other interests. Uh, one of which is Shift's success, um, which I'm very, very thankful for and grateful for that I've been able to build with my team. Now, one thing as well that I will explain with any strategic partnership is not to give, you know, 50-50. So you don't give 50% and neither does your um, partner, your strategic partner. You both give 100% each. And trust me, that's going to eliminate of, of a lot of the kind of frustrations that I see a lot of strategic partnerships have and also joint ventures. You know, joint ventures and strategic partnerships can go wrong, okay? It can go wrong. I see it time and time again in the property industry, in business. And, um, you know, I've personally walked away from deals as well because I didn't get that feeling, right? I didn't get that feeling from a value basis that the other per person involved would give their end of the deal. Now, 
if you both give 100% and you go above and beyond, trust me, your relationship is going to blossom. You're going to do a lot more deals together and you're going to build that reputation that's going to allow you to essentially um, partner with other people because your strategic partner is explaining how good you are at doing things. Well, that's going to open up other opportunities for you to partner with other people in the future. Another thing I explain as well is that when it comes to a strategic partnership or joint venture, whether it's in the property or business industry, um, is to make sure you have each other's roles and responsibilities down uh, on paper, okay? Um, going back to the property industry, as I explained, I see a lot of um, partnerships go wrong, and that's because um, roles and responsibilities have not been outlined in the initial stages. So for me and my investors, we had a, a piece of paper, essentially, or a chat over the phone or Zoom. We explained um, essentially what I would be doing and what uh, my investors would be doing. And that means that, you know, we don't step on each other's toes. It means that we trust each other to get the job done. And also, if something does go wrong, no one's blaming each other because everyone's delegated to a specific role and responsibility that that individual or party needs to get done. Uh, it takes about an hour at most to get these roles and responsibilities down. And also, um, I will say that if things go wrong, try not to blame each other if um, it's not been accounted for. If you've not, for example, thought of a certain role or responsibility and kind of no one's took accountability for it, don't point the fin finger. Instead, take 100% responsibility, even though you're not directly involved. And trust me, your strategic partner will actually um, you respect you a lot more. And in fact, they will probably do the same if they do respect you as well. Now, another example to create a strategic partnership is through a brand, product, or distribution. So an example of this is if you've got a strong personal brand, as an example, you're an influencer, you've got hundreds of thousands or potentially millions of followers on your Instagram, but you're lacking a product, well, you might wanna partner with someone who has got a product so they can use your distribution and your personal brand. So again, as you can see from the previous first example, you're just creating a win-win wherever the other person is lacking and you're gonna leverage each other's um, part where you're lacking, okay? And don't forget, you must bring something to the table. If you haven't got any of those things, if you haven't got a brand, a distribution channel or a product, then unfortunately it's gonna be very, very hard to partner with someone because essentially they're gonna be looking for those things that they can leverage from you. Now I will say with this, when you are looking to partner with someone who has a strong personal brand, just be cautious of going into that partnership because sometimes you can get starstruck or you can aspire to be like this person or it could be that you, you just got a lot of admiration for this person. And if that individual or business is not keeping their end of the deal straight, then unfortunately that can cause friction. So for me personally, I've walked away from um, partnerships because um, the individual uh, wasn't actually giving their attention to the partnership as I expected. And essentially I walked away. And that's an important point to take note of. Don't be afraid to walk away from things. Not every opportunity is for you. And strategic partnerships or joint venture partnerships have longevity in them. They can last for years and years and years. And if there's any red flags at the initial stages, don't be afraid to walk away. Even if that person has got a strong personal brand, a great product or distribution, okay? Or in the first example, if they've got money, if they've got time or knowledge, okay? It's gotta be right from you from a value basis. It's gotta be a win-win. If, if that win-win isn't there, if both parties aren't giving 100%, there's gonna be friction going forward. And that leads me to explain the last thing. Whenever you're doing a strategic partnership or a joint venture with someone, please don't ever forget to get it all signed by a legal professional, such as a lawyer or a solicitor. You want contracts so everyone else knows where they stand in case things go wrong or, you know, things change in the future. Sometimes when, you know, you can do a strategic partnership based on word and trust and a handshake and things don't go right, then it just becomes dramatic and, you know, things can go terribly wrong that you really can avoid if you got things signed in the initial stages. And that means even if you trust that person, if you, you know, trust them 100%, please do get it signed because it's going to just eliminate that frustration. And also it acts as a deterrent as well because everyone knows that they've signed up to something. All right, guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And just to summarize, 
a strategic partnership should be a win-win for all parties involved and really think about what you can give to a partnership and what opportunity you could give to that particular person or business that you're looking to partner with, okay? That could in the form of money, time or knowledge or a brand, product or distribution. Guys, if you have liked this episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next episode.